another concern I had. I felt like the police were so laxed, so relaxed in this situation. Granted, this was the first day, the first time he came to my house, those three times in a row. Woman calls you in distress, scared. She don't know this man. He's making her feel uncomfortable. She think he's trying to get inside. Like, it was just so chill. He's outside eating sandwiches. I, I, I don't know. That's still beyond me. So according to Ricardo Pierre, we used to be in a relationship and I used to come see him when he worked at Costco and when he worked at Whole Foods. I have never seen this man a day in my life. I have never been on a date with this man. I don't ever recall having a conversation with this man, whether it be in person or on the phone. I don't know this man from a can of paint. And I know you're probably wondering, but let me say this. I have no clue how this man got my information. I have no clue how this man got my information. So I cannot tell you the when, the who, the where, the what, and the how that comes with that. I don't know. So when I get a chance to speak to the police and tell my side of the story about how I don't know this man, I still got the knife in my hand. The officer's like, whoa, man, put that down. I'm like, sir, this ain't for you. But he's like, put it down anyway. I get it. I get it. But I was just scared. Remember I told y'all I ordered some Chinese food earlier? My General Souls chicken just sitting out there because Uber Eats man was standing on business about minding his business and just left it. I ain't even hungry no more. I'm not, I'm not even hungry no more. This is, this is just all too much. So they took him away. They cuffed him. They took him away. Apparently, this man is emotionally disturbed. He calls me from the mental institution and leaves me this voicemail. Yeah, um, my fault. I didn't even need uh, to do all that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, like, um, and I got this little nurse. She's the second time she fought around since I first got the phone. It's like, oh, he's dropping to see what I'm going to say. To see if I'm, you know, if everything's normal right now. So I'll just keep it short and brief. Um, yeah, for the most part, my fault. I don't, I don't mean that in a, 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 a weird connotation. I just mean if we have to cross paths again, we will. But if not, it's, it's okay. Which also made me realize he knows my phone number by heart. Now, the next issue is this man's car is in front of my house. I was, I was also feeling the kind of way with the East Orange Police Department because East Orange has a law that you cannot park on the street overnight. There's been times when I've accidentally left my car on the street overnight and I wake up to a ticket. In this instance, knowing I had called the police, knowing that this man had been taken away, they wanted me to call them every night and say, hey, this car is still parked on the street. Hey, this suspicious vehicle is, you know the deal. And this is your law. So why you need me to remind you to enforce your law? So I did what I had to do a couple times out of the week. Whenever they didn't pass by and ticket it. Because once you get three tickets, you get told. I would call them and say, hey, just letting you know. Sometimes they'd be like, oh, you got to call back after midnight. I'm supposed to stay up all night to call y'all and tell y'all somebody breaking your law? Come on now. And I'm scared because I'm like, I, I don't know this man, right? What if he mad? If he come back? First of all, I'm scared he going to come back for his car. And I'm going to have to face him or see him again. I don't know what type of time he going to be on. Then I'm scared he going to be mad that his car got towed. Like he gonna blame it on me or be mad at me or try to get rah-rah with me. I don't know. It's like fear of the unknown at this point. So on March 14th, his car was finally taken. 